We don't understand make, never making an incorrect statement as truth. The minute we say truth, we know it implies choice. This person always chooses to do, say what's right. Are you following me? And the greater the adversity when you make that choice, the more truthful you become. It's like the great wedding vow, love. You jump line, say Raja Kandil, that's her name. My wife, beautiful woman. When we went to City Hall to get civilly married also. Do you, Jeff Lang, take this woman to be your lawfully little wife in sickness and in health? For richer or for poorer? Until death do you part. My wife, you look at my wife, what do you say? I do. He looked at me, I said, whoa. <laughs> Inside my time, it's a joke. <laughs> my wife was going to kill me. But, you know, he made it sound so weighty, you know? You could take this person like sickness and poverty, and no matter how hard it gets. But when he said that, he was saying, oh, just what I said. He was emphasizing through suffering. Do you understand this choice? Are you using your intellect here? Are you ready to make this choice? Do you do it? One young lady once said to me, Jack, you never really loved me. Because when the going got tough, and things got hard, you just got up and left. And she understood. Know, that that's what, love is not just having a lot of good romance and enjoying each other's company a lot. Real love is pain. It's, it's dealing with the pain and the happiness and sticking it out and persevering. Another thing that the crowd emphasizes again and again and again. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. So I'll finish up by saying, you know, that explains why the Quran, in the Quran, sin, when a person sins, they don't mostly destroy God. They don't destroy God at all. They don't even probably, primarily sin against another person. Who's the victim of our sin, mostly in the Quran? Ourselves. The Quran says you sin against yourself. You commit <coughs> dhom, destruction. You commit oppression against yourself. Because every time we do wrong, every time instead of choosing mercy, compassion, etc., we choose its an antithesis, we destroy ourselves. And we don't grow in the direction where we can experience all that is beautiful in this life and the next, and in particular God's being. We grow in a direction that's antithetical to that, and we suffer horribly because of it. It's zip well, I don't want to get into it beyond that. So the time just does not permit. You'll have to read my book. So I'll leave you with one last example of things, because I want to emphasize that even if you read my book, I'm sure you're going to be come up with theological questions that that book doesn't answer. Guaranteed. As many questions as there are people in the world. But the important thing is, just because you can't answer a question doesn't mean the, an answer, a rational answer, isn't out there. You know, I think it's important to remember that. So a lot of times people email that and they say, I have this question and I haven't been able to answer it. And they say, can you answer it? And I, I write back, no. You know, and then they feel, oh, then why should I believe? Well, because I'm not that smart. You know? <laughs> But I'll give you an example. Once my daughter Jamila, and I'm going to end with this because I love this story and I love my daughter. And she taught me a lot. Sometimes as parents, our children come to us and they ask us these type of questions, and especially Muslim parents, and they freak out. You know, because kids tell me, I asked my father this question, and he totally freaked out. You know, he told me I was a cat. But sometimes it's better just to talk it out with them and be patient and admit that, you know, you don't know. So Jamila comes to me one night. I'm tucking her in. I already tucked her two sisters in. Now I'm tucking Jamila. I'm saying, honey, can I sleep? And then she says, daddy, I have a question. I think, oh, there we go. Up till midnight. <laughs> Jamila just never lets go of a question. She's the genius in the family. So I said, yes, what's your question, huh? <laughs> then she said, daddy, you know, I understood, you know, your explanation of the purpose of life and what you got from the Quran. It's coherent. She didn't use the word coherent. It's coherent. It makes sense. You know, the pieces fit together. She still says, I got a question. It's just gnawing at me, and I can't figure out the answer. And I said, well, sometimes, sometimes, you know, those things come later in life. You know, just keep working on it, you know, put it on a shelf. You know, you'll be surprised what the experiences of life can teach. So she said, Can I try it with you? I said, uh, Okay. <laughs> said, Daddy, why does God let little children suffer? I can, I can understand adults. 
right? They have the intellect and everything, and they could learn from it and grow from it, etc. What about like two-year-old babies? Five-year-old kids who never did a wrong thing in their life. Don't even have the maturity to, to grow from these experiences. Why would you let children suffer terrible calamity? Death even. This doesn't make sense to me. Now when you ask about the children, you know, and you're asking a parent, and the, your whole life is about protecting and nurturing and love buckets you have. You know, it's just overwhelming that question. I told them, frankly, honey, I don't know. But I tell you what, I'll give you some advice. You know, Maybe someday you'll figure it out. If you've got a question like that, a good thing to often do, if you already have this sort of understanding of life and you're trying to make, fit it in with that or see if it makes sense by that, you know, if you've got something like that, assume the opposite. Assume the opposite. And see if it fits with how you understand life and our existence. Are you following me? She said, not at all. I said, let me give you an example. Let's assume that it's not as you said. Let's assume just the opposite. Children are in bone. God made it so that children could never suffer up until a certain age. What's, what age would you like to say when ch child did that? I don't know, Daddy. Pick your, I, I said 18? She said, fine, 18. I said, okay, up till 18, a child could never suffer. No disease, nothing. You know? No illness, can't die. Children are invulnerable up to them, then after that, vulnerability kicks in, and after that, they're just like everybody else. I said, then, how would that fit with how we understand the purpose of life as I just described it? Would it make any sense? You know, this purpose of life that even you said seems coherent. And I didn't, expect, you know, I said, you know, this might take years for us to figure out, but it's just a good thing to do when you're faced with such dilemma. So I said, let's just try to think about it for the next 20, 30 minutes. We'll talk about it, and then after that, we'll pursue it at a later time. You know, because I said, frankly, I don't have the answer. So I said, oh, I'm looking like this. I'm pondering the question. We're both quiet. And all of a sudden, I hear her voice. She said, Daddy? I said, uh, yes, sir. She said, I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I, she got it? I've been thinking about it for 15 minutes, but I don't even have a clue. I know she can't be any nearer. I look at her and I say, yeah, go ahead. I think I'm humoring my daughter. Yeah, go ahead. She said, Daddy, I think of it as the way you said it was. You know, that children couldn't suffer at all until they're 18, can't experience any disease or anything. Completely involved. I said, yeah, yeah, no way. She said, then mommies and daddies really wouldn't need to be mommies and daddies anymore. You know, I mean, she wasn't saying that mommies and daddies wouldn't need to give birth anymore. She was saying that parenting would be robbed of all its value. Are you following? Because mm -hmm. in Islam, parenting is one of our major venues for spiritual growth. We have more opportunities, such tremendous opportunities to grow in mercy, compassion, forgiveness, etc., through parenting, through our relationship with our families and our children, than almost any other venue. Are you following me? Yes. My daughter was saying. Kids are vulnerable to 18. Parents wouldn't need to be parents anymore. And so they would be deprived of that experience and wouldn't have all that love. Is there any other relationship in your life where you experience more selfless love, compassion, forgiveness, etc., than a relationship between a parent and a child? And in turn, they absorb it. They don't realize it, but they absorb that whole experience of your love, compassion, etc., and they come to know it. Even when they're six months old, when you're hugging them and caressing them and breastfeeding them, etc., they are developing an understanding of that comfort, that love, that nurture, and it sticks with them their whole life, and they yearn for it, and then later yearn to give it to others. Are you following me? So, I don't know if you understood her question or her answer, but she taught me. She taught me. And a lot of times we can learn from listening to our children. In any case, you guys have got to be exhausted, because I know I am. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them.